Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Experience MedTech information session for the MedTech Talent Accelerator. Um, for uh, uh, the purposes of our presentation, I request you to please, you know, keep your mics off and you can put questions in the chat or there's a Q&A feature in Zoom as well. You could use that um, if you want. You could use either. Um, in terms of uh, how the presentation will work, um, we I will kind of go through the slide deck first and give you a full description of the program and well, in terms of what we're offering as well as the eligibility. Um, and then uh, I'll take questions um, after the presentation. All right, but you can feel free as I'm going through this, feel free to put in questions in the chat, but I will be responding to them after um, the presentation is done. Uh, my name again is, sorry, I may have missed this. My name is Adnan Sayed. I'm a director of the Talent Accelerators Program out of Toronto Metropolitan University. Um, and this is a program that is actually operating in five universities. And you can see the logos at the bottom for, for those. Um, this is a collaboration between the five universities. So, I'll start with just a land acknowledgement, noting that, you know, we are in uh, on Indigenous land here. Um, so Toronto is in the Dish With One Spoon territory where I'm located. Um, the Dish With One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the treaty territory and protect the land. Um, subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all of us um, have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and request, a respect. Um, I do encourage you, wherever you're located, it's, it's good to know, you know, what, uh, whose lands we're on and uh, what those lands are and, and the treaties and other things that are associated with it. Uh, so I'll get right into it. What is the MedTech Talent Accelerator? So we are a program um, that essentially we were focused on what we are, what we call the med medical technology industry. Now you can see this arrow at the bottom here, discipline to industry. Um, essentially what we are looking to do with our program is take students like yourselves in a variety of STEM related, uh, science, technology, engineering, math related disciplines and facilitate this transition to the medical technology industry. So that's essentially what we're looking to do here um, in our program uh, with you here. We are a collaboration, as I said, you know, this program was started off at TMU and McGill with the support of MedTech Canada, which is the industry associate, National Industry Association for Medical Technology Companies. Um, but it has grown now to University of Calgary, Dalhousie, and the University of Toronto. Um, and we're also supported by a zone here at TMU called the Biomedical Zone. So essentially, how do we do this then? So what is our program that helps you, you know, transition to the industry from the disciplines you're in? So this is how we kind of lay ourselves out in terms of uh, how we fit within the graduate program structures and very different graduate program structures that you all may be in. Um, so as I kind of go through this, I'd love to just know who's in the audience. Um, we're, we're about 40 plus, 45 plus uh, participants here. So um, if I could get your you know level of education, are you in a master's or PhD and then your program and university? If you don't mind just dropping that in the chat so I can see who's coming from where, I would really appreciate that. So again, it's your level of program, master's or PhD, um, and the name of your program and the university. Awesome. So as you do that, um, I'll, I'll describe what this is. So as you can see here in red, um, you can see the graduate program. So in general, uh, the graduate programs that you, you are participating in, unless you're in a course-based program, um, what you will have here is you will have your coursework that you need to complete for your master's or PhD, and then you'll need to set up your thesis. So you'll need a proposal and go through the whole approval process for a proposal, then actually do the research, 
Um, and then once you're done with your actual research experiments, your committee then gives you a permission to then start writing, and then you put together your thesis document um, to then you know defend it and then complete your graduate program. Generally, that's the workflow of like uh, in terms of how the degree works. Um, how we're layered on top of that, so we're a uh, what we consider ourselves is a co-curricular program. So what does that mean? A co-curricular program is just extra programming that you're being offered while you're in your degree programs, be it a master's or PhD. So a co-curricular program has nothing like it does. I mean, we in terms of content, we do have something to do with your graduate program, but you know, we're completely unlinked. So what that means is there's nothing you'll do with us that will give you anything towards your graduate program. It's a completely optional program that we're offering to you. And if you apply to us, you're opting in to actually participate in our program as an extracurricular activity while you're a student at your respective institution. Okay, so that's what we are. We're, and, that, and the program is called the MedTech Talent Accelerator. Um, and then what do we do in terms of activities that help you to kind of help you see if you want to get into the medical technology industry. And then if you do, you know, what is it that we offer to help you, you know, take that next step to maybe get a foot in the door in the industry as you graduate. Um, so we offer these two buckets of activities. One is called uh, Explore MedTech, as you can see here. Um, so in terms of Explore MedTech, this is open to all students. So even if you're not eligible for the Experience MedTech, you are eligible to be in our Explore MedTech activities if you're a grad student in our five different institutions and programs that we're, that are part of this. What do we do here? Um, we offer you innovation seminars. So all of these seminars are, are hosted by industry leaders. So we invite industry leaders from the medical technology space and ask them to share something insightful about their business, their industry, for new talent to make an informed decision about whether you want to work in this industry. So one good way to you know understand whether you want to be in the industry is to know what's going on in the industry. And that's how we facilitate the innovation seminars. We've hosted over 50 is my understanding at the moment. Um, we have a, a library of our seminars on our website. So if you look under events on our website, you'll find it. Um, we will be starting our next round of seminars starting September, and we host uh, a seminar at least once a month, sometimes twice or thrice a month even, um, but they start in September till April. There will be at least one seminar a month that you can, uh, it will be a live seminar virtually with a speaker that will be available to all institutions that are here that are part of our group, and then uh, you're able to, you know, Q&A with the speaker as well and learn something insightful and read the whole purpose of this is that you understand what this industry is about because um, industries have a lot of knowledge that you need to comprehend to be able to navigate them and the medical technology industry is highly regulated because you're developing technologies towards the healthcare system and for healthcare purposes um, so th there's a lot of rules regulations and compliance that you need to keep in mind as you think of a, a, a like a career in this industry. And that's what we try to give you insights on. Um, the other activity that you can participate in as a grad student in uh, the five institutions and programs that are part of us um, is the Hack MedTech or MedTech Hack. We call it Hack MedTech sometimes as well. Um, essentially, it's a hackathon, a virtual one that we set up once a year. Our next one is planned for October. Um, so if you got an email uh, for our info session today and you join through that, um, you will also receive an email towards September probably for you to register as a participant of this hackathon. But if you didn't, you know, we are posting all this. Our first place where we post everything is our LinkedIn. So please consider, you know, joining our LinkedIn uh, page. And that's where we post everything we do um, on a regular basis first. So Explore MedTech is open to all of you, regardless of whether uh, you're open, you're, you get into the experience MedTech side, which is our main purpose of our conversation today. Um, but this is open to all of you. So please consider 
attending the seminars or participating in the hackathon um, while you're master's or PhD students. Um, now we'll get into experience med tech. So what is experience med tech? Essentially, we're a training plus uh, a placement program. Um, so we give you training. You're like, I'm already a master's or PhD student. What more training can you give me? You know, I'm already specializing in all of that. Um, so, so yeah, so our training is very specific to understanding the, the medical technology industry. And I'll show you some badges that we've created for you to have a reference of what you what will be covered. These are online self-paced training uh, that we do uh, that you will get access to. So we give you access to this training. Um, and then we also put you in a talent bank um, that we then promote to the industry to help facilitate uh, interviews for them to hire you for an internship. Um, and as you can see here at the bottom, the three asterisks, you know, we do not facilitate volunteer based internships, but we are, you know, this it, don't consider this, you know, your your big a uh, big salary based internship. It won't be. It's usually about twelve thousand five hundred is the minimum we set. Um, for a four month internship, which turns out with about a little over 3000 per month. Um, where possible, we pay this out as a stipend um, where you don't have to pay the benefits and all that stuff. Um, so it comes directly to you. Um, but really, if you're considering being in our experienced med tech program, I, you need to be comfortable with a, a salary level that's around this to get a four month internship through us around $12,500. Um, if that is way too low or if that doesn't work for you, you know, I respect that, but really we're, that's not a pro we can't, we're, we are not facilitating anything that's much more than that. Um, so what you get from us then again, in the experience med tech program is the training and an internship. And then, you know, we've just actually just now in June launched uh, a new kind of part of experience med tech, um, which is called engage med tech. Uh, and then this came out of a lot of conversations with industry um, that said to us that, you know, uh, especially so if you think of the medical technology industry, majority of the companies in Canada are small, medium sized businesses. So what do I mean by small, medium sized businesses? That is usually employees uh, in the range of, you know, some have even less than 10, but some uh, most are between like 10 and 50 or 10 and 100. Um, there, there are a few that are closer to 250. And then you can, if you have employees over 250 employees in your company, then you're considered uh, a large business. So the employee count of our, the companies we work with primarily usually is startups and small, medium sized companies. Um, a key feature of these companies is that they, uh, and I've interviewed a, a, a number of them where they've said, you know, where do they hire talent from? They, their message to me is they hire from their network. So what does that mean? You know, their network is their employees. So people, their employees know that are already working with them or, you know, the executives in the company have a network connection to a university or, or an individuals that they come across through teaching a course or something. Um, and they end up reaching out to such candidates when they have employment opportunities um, to be considered. Um, so what we've done is we've created a systematic networking program called Engage MedTech through which you can be regularly introduced um, and talk to and get guidance from uh, the, the professionals that are in our uh, industry network um, that we have. So these are one-on-one -on -one conversations. And we'll, again, I'll give you more details on this on another slide, but this is also now part of our experience med tech offering to you. So what are we offering to you? We're offering to you uh, self-paced online training that gives you a very good understanding of uh, the med tech industry. We're offering you networking opportunities with our industry professionals in our network. And then we're offering the facilitation of internships. So the internships are not guaranteed. Um, we uh, we facilitate uh, putting you forward for internships to our company networks. And then, you know, it's up to them to look through your resume and then decide whether they want to interview or not. And then we have a system set up through which you'll get interview requests 
and then offers presented to you as companies decide on if they want to move forward with a specific candidate. So that's her, in a nutshell, you know, this one figure is what uh, uh, I use to describe to, you know, what is the MedTech Talent Accelerator? This is what we are. We help you explore MedTech and also get some experience into MedTech as you're about to transition out of your master's or PhD degrees. So here, I just wanna show you some uh, logos of companies that have hired from us. So all these companies have picked up a master's or PhD candidate from us. Um, on the left, you can see some of the titles of jobs that they've hired from us for. Um, so you can get a picture of, you know, what are the kind of roles that they end up showing up in front of us. Um, but again, they do vary, uh, but just to give you a snapshot. Now, I did talk to you about the industry readiness training. So this slide is just to show you what these are. So essentially, we offer you these four badges through our industry readiness training. Again, these are online self-paced training content that you complete the modules, you do uh, basically comprehension-based assessments for each of them to earn these badges. And you can, uh, you'll get a, a output of the, from our learning management system of the badge, which you can post to LinkedIn. And I would suggest you even put it on your resume that you've completed these badges once you have, or you're in progress. <laughs> to help you showcase that you know you're 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 working towards setting yourself up um, to enter the industry in a good way, and we focus on R and D business, and then we also a key component of our, our training is also to help you understand the the healthcare system itself. You know the healthcare system in Canada, but also in the U.S. and Europe, um, so that you know when you're building products and services in a medical technology company, you're you're building it towards the healthcare system. Um, so for the so that's your market. So you really need to understand what data privacy means to the healthcare system that you need to adhere to as you develop a technology. Um, what are the classes of devices you need to be considering when it comes to you know healthcare related devices that are used for therapeutic or diagnostic purposes and all of that. So we cover all those materials within these badges um, for your benefit. Now, as I mentioned, Engage MedTech. So this is just to give you a snapshot. We actually just launched this in June. We've run, we've already acquired about 34 uh, networking hours through our, through our network. Um, and these are just the logos of companies uh, of the professionals have come from and the hours they've given us just to give you a sample of, you know, who you'll get to network with. Many of these have been, you know, even CEO or VP or director level uh, professionals that have actually contributed their time. Um, and the way it works is that uh, we reach out to these professionals every month for them to give us one hour of their time in the next month. And then as soon as they give us availability for that one hour, um, the next day, all the talent that are in our experience MedTech program get, get an email blast to say, hey, we have a new professional ready to network with you. One of you find a time with him. Um, and it's a first time come first serve action. So whoever gets to that booking first, um, gets to book that time with that uh, professional. Um, we do restrict it. So if you booked one uh, professional for the month, you know, you won't have, you won't even get those emails for the next professionals that are coming down the pipeline so that we get everybody else a chance to at least get one uh, booking. Uh, so for that, you will, uh, you will get these emails from us on a regular basis. And there's a quick way to just get in there and book the time. Um, in terms of uh, professionals, I've told you again, you know, we already had about 34 and just two months of running this. Um, and we're aiming for, you know, at least 100 plus hours of networking um, that we will be getting offering to experience med tech uh, talent. So that's our program. Now, what I'll get into now is really the nitty gritty of saying, figuring out whether you're eligible to actually uh, apply to the experience med tech program and what are the kind of uh, nuances that are involved in that. Um, so here, what you can see is 
you have uh, what we what we're looking for are enrolled graduate students that are at TMU, McGill, uh, in any med tech related program. So at TMU and McGill, we're open to a variety of different uh, master's or PhD programs, but they need to be thesis based. Um, at University of Calgary and Dalhousie, it is the BME, so the Biomedical Engineering Program, specifically that we intake talent from. Um, and at the University of Toronto, it's the Medical Biophysics Program. So if you're in the any of these master's or PhD programs, you're eligible uh, to apply to us based on num item number two. Um, so experience med tech, the way we run it is at the tail end of the degree. So what does that mean? So imagine you're trying to get, uh, so the way we layer our program is that you need to be in the writing phase of your program when we offer your availability for internships to the companies. So imagine you're, uh, so what we need from you, and this is a confirmation we actually need from you and your supervisor when you apply to us, is that, so imagine you're looking, you're gonna be in the writing phase in September, then you know we need a confirmation that by August 31st you'll you'll actually be you have confirmation from your supervisor that you'll be in your writing phase. So you'll be just writing your thesis. You're done your bench work um, uh, for you to generate all that in for you for your thesis. So for September 1st you need to be in your writing phase by then. Um, and then you can also apply to us if you estimate that by December you'll be done your bench work and you'll be in your writing phase. So then you can apply for January internships. Um, and we're also open right now to, if you're looking at May 1st, 2025, to be in your writing phase, um, you can also apply to us. Now, as the time horizon kind of goes further and further in the future, um, we understand that there is uncertainty and we understand that uh, there may be a change needed and we're open to that. So imagine, you know, you join us to say you, you'll be in the writing phase by May 1st. Um, but say come January, you and your supervisor know that, you know, you, you need to push it by another term. So we have a quick way. Uh, what we do is once you are part of our program, you get an email from us every two weeks to confirm that you're still available and interested in staying in our program. It's a simple form we ask you to submit. And in that form, we give you the option to move the, the date. So it, it can be moved from September to January or January to May. Or when it comes closer to May, you can move it from May to then September of 2025. Um, but what I'd recommend is for you to apply early so that you're in front of our uh, employers for a longer period of time. And also getting access to our engaged med tech networking opportunities um, while you're uh, while you're waiting to be seen if you uh, get placed as an intern. So in terms of deadlines, our application deadline for this round for this term is August 2nd. Um, once we confirm that you are eligible, we will immediately give you access to the training um, and it needs to be completed. If you land an internship with us, it needs to be completed um, before the start of that internship. Um, and then in terms of, you know, the internships itself, these are completely at the uh, you know, action over the companies that we work with, and they will reach out um, through our system to request interviews as they consider you as uh, candidates for any roles that they may have um, in their business. And uh, as you, one thing missing here, again, we'll add it for the next one because we just launched this program, but you will also starting uh, August 8th, you will also start getting engaged med tech networking opportunities um, in your inbox to consider. So now I've gone through, you know, eligibility and whether you are able to apply or not, you've kind of helped, hopefully that's helped you clarify that piece. Um, now I'm going to describe in my last slide here, just what does it take to apply to us? It is a, a significant process. You do need to give it some time to apply to us um, because each element is really important for us to move you forward in our program. Um, the first and foremost is that, you know, you are in a master's or PhD student that is thesis based, you have a supervisor, we need a confirmation from your supervisor about when you'll be done your bench work and in your writing phase. Um, so if that is a key element of our program, we like with all the 
uh, master's and PhD programs at the different institutions. That is a key requirement that we've set up between us. Um, and it is your master's or PhD program that will confirm that eligibility for us once they see that form from you and your supervisor. So we work with the institution's programs to confirm this. It's a simple form. You just have to indicate the date and both the prof, the supervisor, and you need to sign off on it. Um, that's item number one. Um, so once you have that, um, the second piece that you need to prepare, and this is for us to be able to promote your resume to the, uh, the med tech employers we work with, um, we need you to have a really good resume submitted to us. Um, each of you in all your institutions um, have a, a career center at your institution. And I can guarantee you there's some incredible, you know, res, uh, career consultants that are there. Please, please, please take your resume to them, get it looked at, tell them, you know, you want to be considered in the med tech industry and, and get a feedback from them. There is a bit of time. There's about two, three weeks. Hopefully you can land one appointment at least with them where you can, uh, get them to review your resume. We really need good quality resumes. You know, your resume reflects the quality of our program to our employers. Uh, so, so we actually personally do review your resumes as well um, to make sure it is of a good quality. And we have, we, we do reserve the right to reject uh, uh, applicants if their resume is given to us in a really poor quality. Um, we have some unique things we need you to do to your resume to apply to us. Um, and this is because we circulate your resume quite widely. We have about 250 companies on our listserv right now that this gets out to um, on a monthly basis once you're in our system. Um, we do need you to remove your home address. Um, so we don't, we don't want your home address there. We do not need or want your email or phone number there. Our system has a process to uh, for the company to communicate with you through us in a way that we reserve your privacy and we protect it. Um, so we don't want your email and phone number on your resume. Um, in terms of location, you can put down, you know, Toronto, Ontario, instead of your home address, if that's where you live. Um, so please, this is really important. Um, and another piece that we actually uh, also don't want you to have is your name. Your name, it, it just needs to be initials. And I'm sorry that's missing from this, but it will be in the email that we send out to you after this. But we do need your name to be just an acronym. So say it's my name, Muhammad Adnan Sayyid, I would put down M-A-S. Uh, I wouldn't put down the full name. Because again, you know, we can be Googled and you can find contact information through that. And, and you know, for because of privacy, legislations in Canada, we're not allowed to simply disclose your identifiable information like that uh, uh, to, to a broad group of stakeholders. Um, we need your informed consent and the interview process has that built in where uh, the company send out a request, you have to say yes or no before they get to know what your full name is and your email is and all of that um, for uh, the purpose of an interview. Um, a couple of other things. So in terms of, you know, what you highlight, you know, as you are doing a thesis, most likely in your master's or PhD, you know, it is considered a quote unquote project. Um, so please consider writing your resume as you taking on projects, designing them and then delivering on them and then use that kind of language, because usually that that's something that the industry likes to see is, you know, you being able to manage different projects. Um, in our industry readiness training, we actually have modules on project management about what it takes, you know, to formally set up project management for any project you're doing. So we have some simple modules that you can take as well um, in our training. Then uh, finally, on number two, we are looking at in terms of, you know, the size of your uh, resume, it should not be more than two pages. Industry does indicate to us that they prefer resumes over, you know, five, 10 page CVs. But sometimes uh, researchers and people with a, getting a PhD could have. Um, so we are looking for, you know, a sharp two page resume catered to the industry, uh, to the med tech industry. So that's your resume. So please, uh, we really need this to be of good quality. We do go through at least one round of feedback with you, regardless of, uh, you know, once you submit that to us, um, we will ask you.
to for some modifications or at least give you one more chance to uh, to address anything you want to address after you apply to us. Now, the item number three that we need from you, again, this is unique to us, number three and four. Um, so number three is pitch yourself. So instead of, you know, what you do when you apply for a regular job posting is you have a, a cover letter. So instead of you having a cover letter, um, we're asking you to have a pitch to the industry. So you'll write a paragraph. We don't want it longer than 650 characters. It's about two to three sentences or max four where you fit this in. Um, the purpose of this is for you to simply highlight some skills and then also project into, you know, why you want to be in the med tech industry. And this is something the employers will read. Um, so give it some time to, you know, draft, make a first draft, take a day, edit it, and then get it finalized to then put in our form once you submit. Now, item number four, um, this is also, again, a unique ask. We have usually, uh, for, as a program, we do ask you to do a one minute video recording um, where you briefly uh, respond to this one question. And this is the interview question you have to respond to. Everybody gets the same question to respond to, which is if your manager asks you to complete or do a task or project and you don't know how to do it, what will you do? And you have literally, you know, no more than one minute to respond to that on camera. Uh, and if it's longer than one minute, we do ask you to redo it. Um, so some things to keep in mind as you do this, um, please make sure you know you have a plain background, you're dressed you know, business, uh, business casual at minimum uh, when you're doing this. Um, also, you know, there's some incredible, you know, editing software that's out there, you know, even on TikTok or Insta and others. Um, we do not want you to use any of that. We simply, we want a very simple recording. You hit the start button, you look at the camera, you uh, briefly say hi, and then you respond to the question and then you stop the recording. Um, if you need to snip it at the front and the end, so you're not showing yourself hitting on or off, you can do that. But beyond that, we don't want you to do anything else. Simply take that file and upload it uh, to us um, as your video sample. Okay, so that's number four. Uh, and then five, which is your unofficial transcript. So we don't want you to go get any formal transcript. It's unofficial. You should have it through your university to be able to download an unofficial transcript. Um, we are very, being very clear, and I'll repeat it twice, we do not share this with anyone. Um, and again, I'll repeat it. We do not share your unofficial transcript with anyone. This is only for us to verify your eligibility into the program. So it'll be uh, someone like we have a, my project managers are here, program managers here are, are on the call, like Roman and Mary Susan, they would be the ones looking at it to say, yes, um, your transcript looks good for the program you're in and what level you're at and all of that. Um, it just does not get shared. And especially we do not share this with employers. Um, this stays just between us and you so that we can verify your eligibility. Um, we, and again, saying that it, just to verify that we're all on the same page on that. Um, so that's what we have. So these are five things you got to do to apply to us. Um, and uh, that's what will end the deadline to do this for this round is August. Sorry, I'll go back just to make sure I remember it correctly. August 2nd. All right. Um, and with that, you know, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I will now pause this and then I'll take all the questions that I'm seeing coming in. Um, feel free to put in your questions in the chat or in the Q&A window. I'll look at both. Um, if for any reason you don't want it to be public, you want to send me a private chat message, or I think you can do an anonymous question uh, in, uh, in the Q&A feature in Zoom, you can do that. That's totally okay as well. Um, I'll just uh, kind of end this formal piece by saying, you know, please, our email is medtech at talent-accelerator.com. If you have any uh, further questions beyond what I'm able to address today, please email us. Or if it's anything very specific or detailed, um, please put that there. Um, and then uh, I do request you to follow our LinkedIn page. If you search MedTech Talent Accelerator on LinkedIn, you'll find us. Um, we post everything there first. Any event we do, any hackathon, anything like that, we do that.
All right. So I'm going to stop my screen and then I'm going to start looking at questions. Sorry, you know, you may have posted the questions before or after someone. I'll get to it as best as I can. I have a solid 20 minutes right now to go through these with you. So we'll do that. And for that, I'll also stop the recording. So give me one second if I can do that.